At Enjoy Church, you'll share in a worship experience with people from all walks of life. Hear powerful, high-energy music. Get great, practical, real-life teaching from Pastor Darren Carstens. And we have age-appropriate teaching for your entire family. Come join us on Sundays in Collinsville at the Gateway Center at 1025 a.m. or at our Alton campus on Saturdays at 5 p.m., Sundays at 915 and 1135 a.m., and Wednesday nights at 705 p.m. Come see why Enjoy Church is a place for everyone, including you. For directions, visit our website, enjoychurch.tv. a series called Radical Ridiculous Results, and and really that's our prayer for you. We're in the middle of a fast also, but today I want to talk about a vision for your life. You know, you have to know who you are and why you're here, understanding your purpose. We talk a lot about that here at Enjoy Church because it's such an important topic for you to know that you're not an accident, that God has plans for your life, and that you matter, and that you're important. And that uh, he didn't just say, well, they're, you know, they're here. Let's give them a job to do. God literally had you in his mind as the focus of his love before he created even the stars and the moon and the planet. You are the focus of God's love. That's an incredible thought if you really stop and you think about that for just a minute. That will overwhelm you because you are that special to God. Now, if you're like me, you think, how can I be with all of my mistakes, the mistakes of my past? And yet... God says that you are. My prayer for you is that we help you discover why you're on planet Earth, because when you do, you'll get energy, you'll get focus, a lot of benefits and a lot of uh, uh, side benefits that happen to you as a result of knowing why God put you on planet Earth. You know the scripture, it's a famous scripture, I put it in your outline, with no vision, people perish. What that means is perish means you go away, you cease to exist physically, you'll never cease to exist spiritually, but you know, you, you leave the planet maybe earlier than you should have, or you don't accomplish what you should have. And so the Hebrew word for vision is the word calzone. It starts with K, calzone, not calzone. Some of you are fasting and you're going, yeah, I want one of those sandwiches. <laughs> not that, not that. It's a vision. It means to have a dream. It means to understand who you are, to have a vision, to have a dream to have a passion for life, a reason for living, a revelation, an understanding. And that, see, that's my prayer for us that this year of 2014, we either renew our revelation, get a dream, get the understanding of why God put us here and understand that because sometimes we can just get so busy with life and life can be overwhelming that we forget why God put us here. And I want you to own that because it'll bring focus to your life. It'll give you endurance to go through life and to stick to it, and then it really will bring satisfaction and fulfillment to your life as well. Paul said this, and let me start off this way, really to find out what your vision is and the dream that God has for you, it's only found in Christ. He says it this way, he says, in Christ we'll find out who we are and what we're living for. Rewind for just a second, because that is how you find out who you are and why God put you here is only in Christ. So it's through relationship with Jesus that we discover why God put us here and what we're supposed to do. It's part of, and this is kind of cool, it's part of his overall purpose that he's working out with everything and everyone. So here's the good news. You and me, we are part of the puzzle piece of this overall picture of what God is doing. God's doing some incredible things in the world, and you are part of it. He's picked you and chosen you. Now, he did give you a free will, so you can reject it and say, no thanks, or you can accidentally reject it. See, there's an in-your-face rejection towards God where you say, no, thank you. I'm going to live my own way and do my own thing. But there's another rejection, and it's the one that most of us are guilty of rejecting, and that is where we get sidetracked with life and we pursue 
income and getting to the next paycheck and the next vacation and just maintaining and just existing. Did you know by doing that, you are really, by just going after the mundane and the mediocre and just the existence of life, the survival of life, did you know when you do that, oh my goodness, that you are rejecting God's purpose for your life? I'm not intense enough with you. (laughs) And I'll tell you why, because I would like to wake myself up and wake you up to the fact that God has an incredible, ridiculous, radical plan for your life. He really does. But there is also an enemy of your life. Oftentimes, the enemy is the enemy in me. Me, I'm my worst enemy. And so are you, your worst enemy. But there is an outside enemy. And he often will distract us with our circumstances and our situations, try to get us off course. And so... uh, we are our gift to each other, aren't we? You're a gift to me. I'm a gift to you. To get, receive your gift today because I'm going to wake your world up to the fact that God loves you so much that he has great things in store for you. He says, choose this day what you'll do. Life, death, blessing, cursing. Oh, by the way, choose life. And so my encouragement to you is to choose. Successful people, they all know what they want. You don't stumble into success. Someone says, well, I know somebody that just stumbled into it. They bought a lottery ticket they won or whatever. Hey, that's not, the, <laughs> that's not the definition of success. Money is not the definition of success. Money is fine to have, and my prayer for you is that you have lots of it. I want you blessed, yes, but that's not success, and if you think that it is, you've got to renew your mind with, well, what it really is success then, what it is. It's fulfilling your purpose. You know, it's not wrong to have ambition. Ambition is a good, healthy thing. In fact, Paul said in Romans chapter 15 that he said, it's always been my ambition. Paul was a very ambitious guy to preach the gospel to people who did not know who Christ was. And so we're all part of that together, and we've got a vision, God. And so we have a choice to not be disobedient to that in the book of Acts He says, I was not disobedient to the vision that came from God. And my prayer for you today is that none of us are disobedient to the vision that God gives us to live our lives. So let me tell you, when you radically discover and understand that you have a life objective, that God has plans for your life, some great things happen. Number one, the first thing that happens that's incredible is it reduces frustration, How many of you know this life that we live is very tough at times? We go through windows and seasons where, man, life is tough. It could be tough financially or maybe your relationship, your marriage. You can have some conflict at work. It's not always groovy. And things can go tough on us really quick. But when you and I know the reason that we're here and what we're supposed to do and our piece of the puzzle at this time of our life, what, we're, what God's plan for us is, you know what it does is it reduces the frustration because you're able to say, hey, some of this just goes with the territory and I'll get through it. When I know why I'm here, when you know why you're here, you can get through a lot of stuff that reduces the frustration. See, there's something about focus. Focus is an incredible thing. I love this verse in the book of James chapter one, verse eight, that says, Uh, The life of a man who has divided loyalty will reveal in his life instability at every turn. Do you know how you are instable? Instability comes when you've got two legs, hopefully, and if you've got two legs, it's hard to stand on just one for very long. But there's something when you're planted You're focused, foot here, foot here. That when the attacks come and when the winds and the storms of life come at you, you can have a little bit of this going on, but you're planted. What is that? That's loyalty to vision spiritually. So spiritually, it's the same thing. Physically, we can be planted, but spiritually, it's important for us to be planted So that when those attacks come and when the enemy comes and when those storms just hit us from every side, spiritually speaking, 
You're not divided and you're not in sta- unstable at every turn of life. So I encourage you today. You know, Luke, Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. If you're going to love one and hate the other, it's just going to happen. You know, and many times what we try to do when we come to the Lord is we try to say, well, Lord, I want the benefits. I for sure, I, I, I read that you're a healer. I want my healing. I want my salvation. I want my fire insurance. But uh, I kind of, you know, I kind of want to call my own shots <laughs> for a while. I mean, I know for a while. Someday I'm going to totally sell out to the Lord. But right now I want the benefits, but I kind of want to call my own shots. I don't want to go all in. Like pastor talks about all in, that's kind of like, Scary to me. I'm speaking to somebody today. But I want you to know when you go all in and you let go of the past, you move into God's blessing. You can't serve two masters. You can't say, well, I'm going to go all in with God, but, you know, I kind of want to reserve some of this. It doesn't work that way. It's all in. Here's the other thing that it does. When you and I do this, it increases our motivation. What's motivation? Motivation. You've heard of a motivational speaker. He lives in a van down by the river. (laughs) You know what motivation is? It's when you have a vision and you have a focus that you also then have energy and passion, a reason to get your rear end up out of bed every day, that not just like drag yourself out of bed. Paul said, I press toward the goal to win the prize, to win not to exist, not to survive, not to say, well, that's good enough. You know, hey, it's good enough. No way. This is God. Give everything you've got. Leave it all on the table. Live with excellence with your life. Your life, you know, whether you're a lawyer or a doctor or a business person or a school teacher or a truck driver, whatever it is you do, put it all out there. Live for it. Let God use it. And then the next thing that it does is when you and I have a When we understand why God put us here and we have a vision for our life, it allows us to concentrate, to focus. One of the things of our society is we have so many options before us and the byproduct of so many options is that we can not commit. And when we don't commit, we don't succeed because I think today we have a culture, a society who dabbles who never, not everybody, but a lot of us, we don't complete our projects. We get excited about this, and we're all jazzed, and we're all excited about it, and we do good with it for a month or two, and then it's hard because everything's hard. Anything worthwhile will cost you something. There is a price to be paid for a great marriage, There is a price to be paid to build a business. There is a price to be paid to have your dream fulfilled in your life. And a lot of us are attracted by the bling or the sparkle or the shiny object of a new business or, you know, a new relationship. And man, he looks good. She looks good. And they look good. And it looks good. And we, you know, even a new a new thought or a new idea, and we get attracted to it, and then we go along, and we've realized that it's a little bit difficult, and so we go, it's, there's got to be a better option out there, and we look, and so that one, and then we go to this one, and that one never gets completed, and then this one doesn't get, and all of a sudden, you have five, ten uncompleted projects in your life. I want to encourage you to focus in and do the thing. There's a couple things I'll share with you how to do it. Number one the thing that matters most, and number two, the thing that's going to give you the biggest return the fastest is a great thing to focus on because it gives you some momentum. That's not even in my notes. You got that for free today. (laughs) How do you do it? Well, when you focus, Paul said, I bring all of my energy. I bring all of my energy onto this one thing, onto this one thing. There's something about bringing all of your energy into getting something done. Now, Here's the crazy thing. If you're ever going to be great, you're going to have to have seasons of your life where you are unbalanced. Sometimes we value balance so much, and I might get in your business on this one, and if I get in your business too much, you just, 
You don't have to agree with me, but just soak on it a little bit and take it home. And if it works for you, put it to work. If it doesn't, we'll still be friends forever. But let me help you out. Sometimes we try to balance everything in life. And when we try to balance everything in life, we're not great at what we could be great at. Because to be great is really freakishly unbalanced for a little while. I heard uh, Kevin O'Leary speak recently. If you don't know who he is, how many of you have seen the, the show on Friday night, Shark Tank? Anybody like that show? Oh, you're missing it. It's such a great show of education. You can learn a lot about human behavior, about finance, about business. What it is, Shark Tank is a group of investors who are millionaires and billionaires who sit and they let people come to them and pitch them their idea and their business. And then they either, they interrogate them for a little while to, you know, the people get to ask for money. I need $75,000. I need a million and a half dollars for this. And they interrogate him. Kevin O'Leary said this. He said, when I'm interrogating, investigating people to find out if they are worthy of my investment, he said, I ask them a few things. If they're doing a startup business, one of the things that they are going to have to do, he said, is they're going to have to live an unbalanced lifestyle for about 36 months minimum. And so before I tell them that, I ask them, what's your plans with your children, with the little league, with the soccer? Now, you don't have to agree with me on this. I'm not sure I even agree with it. This is what Kevin said. And I do understand that's what Paul was saying here. What are you going to do during the next 36 months with your kids' soccer games, baseball games? What's your vacation plans? How many weeks of vacation are you going to take? And he said, when they tell me, well, it's an important priority for me to be at every soccer game, and we're going to take two weeks of vacation, you know, and other than that, we're focused in. He said, I step away from the project because he said, I have invested millions of dollars in people who won't go all in. He said, I need an all-in freakishly commitment for 36 months because I know this, you can't dabble in anything and be successful. Now, this sounds like, whoa. Some of you are looking at me like, oh, my gosh. And so maybe you don't take it that far, but let me, the reason I share that with you today is to wake you up because the truth is, is a lot of us are diddle, diddle, diddle dabbling in life. We've got dreams or we've got passions and we've got ideas. And I want to challenge you that for a season of your life, and this is the beginning of the year, we're talking about not necessarily a business. We're talking about your life. And the reason you're here on planet Earth, which, by the way, is a spiritual reason, to have a relationship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, number one, and then to take that relationship and find out what you, what piece of the puzzle you are, to discover the dream that God has for you. Maybe it is to build a business so that you can make millions of dollars to tithe to the kingdom of God to fund the vision of reaching people. That's a great thing. Maybe it's to help people who have been through the hurtful situations that you've been through in life. You understand? God has a plan for you. So Kevin says this, there's a dirty little secret that the rich people understand that many times others don't. And here's the dirty little secret. And that is that if you will focus all of your energy and all of your effort into hard work, a four-letter word called work, that you can overcome a ton of obstacles in life and you can break free from mediocrity and your dreams can be fulfilled. But... Just like the golf clap in the room, he said that society doesn't want to hear that because we want a gravy train, an easy routine, and there is, we often want the path of least resistance. And success comes with 
great opposition and much resistance. And many times we misunderstand that. And we think because there is so much pressure, because this is so hard, I must be doing something wrong. I'm out of God's will. When in fact, the mere fact that the enemy hates you so much, it's all coming against it. And I want to say to you, hey, welcome to the family. Here's the good news. You've got me and I've got you and we've got each other and we're going to overcome. You are a winner and you are a champion and you're going to make it through. And in the name of Jesus, this is going to be your best year ever. If it's your best year spiritually. Here's the other thing that happens and this is the good news. It attracts cooperation. I speak that over you all the time. You are magnetic. You're winsome and attractive. Why? Because you've got vision, because you've got passion. Listen, this is a team. This is a family. You guys are with me. I'm with you. We're doing this together. We're, we are reaching people together, all of us together. Why? Because we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. What are we, where are we going? Well, we're helping change lives. We're building churches in foreign countries. We're digging wells. We're supporting missionaries. We help people all around this community. We do it all the time. We have home missions projects. We're on television taking the message of hope outside of these four walls. I want to show you something today. This is incredible. I have in my hand here a letter. This was addressed to me personally. So I, the reason I have it in my hand is because it was addressed to me personally. I opened it up. This is a check from the Department of Corrections for $1.88, $1.88. No, 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 don't you laugh, don't laugh, listen. There's a letter that came with it. And I won't read all of the details because I don't want to tell you the intimate details of this, but this is a prisoner who is in incarceration, who watches us on television in the jail. They say a bunch of stuff, and then they said, hopefully I will be released soon, and when I do, they're from this area, this community, they said, hopefully I will make more than $18 a month and my tithe will increase. Let me tell you something. This reminded me of the lady who gave all she had. Think what an investment. This is, think about the attention that this woman is getting from God right now because she's being accountable and responsible. And yet, some of us are still struggling with this thing of the tithe and getting on with our life. And I just want to say to you at the beginning of the year, wake up, come on. God has a purpose for your life. Start trusting God with your finances, with your money, with your life. Take Isaac to the altar. Abraham, because God's asking you, and here's the good thing. This is where in the scripture, Jehovah Jireh, the name of God, God's very name, the essence of who he is, is provider. A dollar 88. Okay, so she goes on and says, I would like to be part of the Enjoy Church prison ministry to help write inmates. Because she goes on and says, one of the things that, that, that hurts is that I'm in prison and I don't have correspondence and I don't have reading material and I'm not being fed. Well, how cool would it be if I could come back to enjoy church and use the pain of my past to minister to other people and tell them, hey, here's how I got through it. You can get through it. And God is not finished with you. Don't you love that? I love it. So it attracts cooperation. And then, how do you determine your life objective? Well, the first thing you need to do is you have to spend some time with God. You, you have to get along with him and spend some time with him. And then, begin to look at what you love in life, what you're talented at, what your passions are for. Some of you love children, and you love working with children. And boy, we thank God for you. You can help in the education department, in the children's department here at Enjoy Church. Some of you love business and finance. Go build a business and fund the kingdom of God. Give your tithe and then above that and just blow it out. 
Some of you love that. Some of you are administrators, managers. You need to be managing and administrating for the church. Some of you are organized in such a way that you go, that row's crooked. Well, it's your job to go fix that crooked row. Go do that. Some of you like cleanliness. Help us clean it up. Others of you, you're mechanical and you work with your hands. Hey, listen, there's a place for each and every one of us. All right? I could go through the list and go on, but find out what you're good at, what you're talented at, and then spend time with God. Identify your gifts. Number two, review your experiences like this lady did, you know. She's got some good, some bad, and some ugly, like all of us do. And here's the good news for you. God does not want to waste the hurts that you've been through in your life. You've been through a divorce. Guess what? God wants to help you use that to bring healing to someone else. You've been through an addiction and you were addicted. Guess what? God wants to use you to help heal someone else with an addiction. You've been through depression. How many of you know there's a lot of depressed people out there that need some encouragement and need some hope? Whatever you've been through in your past, you've been through a bankruptcy, God wants to use you. God does not want to waste your hurt. In fact, he wants to take it as a trophy of God's goodness and God's grace and rub it in the devil's face because you have submitted your life to God and God wants to help you. Guess what? He loves you. He's got a plan for your life and the brokenness of your past, along with the good things of your past, along with your gifts and your talents, God wants to use it to build his kingdom. Your part of the greatest call on planet Earth and that is the call of redemption and health. God has made you a co-laborer with him. Amen? Amen? And then the last thing, you need to decide what that one thing is for you. What's really the most important thing in your life? Because a lot of us get distracted with all of the options and all of the opportunities in life. I could do this. I could go back to school. I could do this or that. I could work here. I could work there. But what's most important and what will get the greatest return? Let me give you a little hint. Two things that will last forever. What will last the longest? God's word will never pass away, number one. Number two, people. If you can learn God's word and apply yourself to the principles of God's word and then have a passion, a heartbeat for people, people who walk through this door, people who are at Schnooks, people who are at Walmart, people who are at Shop and Zig, people who are at your work, your neighbors. If you can have a passion for people and become a connector between them and God, God will take you into your destiny. That was an amazing message. And I know you'll want a free copy on DVD. Just go to our website at enjoychurch.tv or call the number on your screen. We'd love for you to come out and join us here at Enjoy Church. There's so many awesome things happening. And we also have an exciting online campus that we would love for you to check out. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you next week. At Enjoy Church, you'll share in a worship experience with people from all walks of life. Hear powerful, high-energy music. Get great, practical, real-life teaching from Pastor Darren Carstens. And we have age-appropriate teaching for your entire family. Come join us on Sundays in Collinsville at the Gateway Center at 1025 a.m. Or at our Alton campus on Saturdays at 5 p.m., Sundays at 915 and 1135 a.m., and Wednesday nights at 705 p.m. Come see why Enjoy Church is a place for everyone, including you. For directions, visit our website, enjoychurch.tv.